نحدہ و نسلی علیہ رسول کریم اما بعد فوض باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر آل مائی اسٹوڈنٹس مائی فرینڈس مائی فرینڈس لاسٹ ٹائم سم آف دا اسٹوڈنٹس ٹولڈ می دیٹ یو شوڈ پریزینٹ ویڈیو لیکچر اباؤٹ دا انفیکشیز ڈیزیزز سو آئی پرامسڈ دیم دیٹ ان شاء اللہ ان لیکس لیکچر Uh, I will uh, have a specific video on the infectious diseases that is about the uh, public health, related to the public health. So, so uh, before going to elaborate uh, our video lecture, I would like to say that you should subscribe our YouTube channel that is uh, on the name of uh, Dr. Latif Nazir uh, in MCARE TV and also like my Facebook page. I would also like to say that you should share and like my videos and also subscribe the channel also press the bell icon so you will be frequently um, alarmed by the upcoming new notifications of the video thank you so much so today uh, our topic is very important about uh, the public health and uh, we have chosen the infectious diseases, different infectious diseases. So, so today we will talk about the uh, infectious diseases. So before going in depth of the infectious diseases, I would like to define the infectious disease, that what are infectious diseases. So there are diseases which are caused by the agents. And what are those agents? The agents like viruses, bacteria, parasites so they will influence inside our body and cause different diseases so first disease in the public health i would like to explain is measles measles in urdu you can simply call it khasra so what is measles measles is basically an infectious disease caused by a virus caused by a virus and how it spreads inside the body so you should know about this that this virus is airborne that can easily be spread from one person to another person through the air droplet say for example when an infected person If there is an infected person in the surrounding and a healthy person comes and in contact with that person, so that virus can easily be transferred to air droplet inside the body of the healthy person and that person get diseased by the measles. Uh, if we talk about its incubation, incubation period, The incubation period, first I would like to uh, define the incubation period, that what is incubation period. The incubation period is basically the period of exposure of a disease to its first symptom. This is basically the incubation period and the incubation period for the measles virus is from 12 to 14 days. Now, This is a communicable disease. As I have already told you that it can easily be spread from one person to another person. So it's a communicable disease. And now we come towards its uh, clinical implications or clinical relevance or clinical findings. So in clinical findings, you can come up with a high grade fever. photophobia so you already know about the fever and what is photophobia so photophobia is basically the light sensitivity light sensitivity because of the sun exposure light sensitivity can be because of the incandescent light light sensitivity can be because of the fluorescent light that is a tube light inside your rooms so this is one of the clinical implication of measles Then complex spot, it can make 
a spot, a white spot inside the mouth, in center of the mouth. It affects the mucosa of the mouth. So this is called is the complex spot. And it usually lies in the center of the mouth. Then after a few days, you will come up with red rashes on your face. You will face red rashes on your face. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, in the investigation, what a physician do, what doctors do, so in its investigation is based on its sign and symptoms. That what are the sign and symptoms of this disease? So it should be done according to the sign and symptoms. The first thing is leukopenia, that is the lymphocyte count. So the lymphocyte count here decreased to 2000 microliter. And in the previous lectures, we have already told about the lymphocyte that what is the lymphocyte, what is the lymphatic system. Inside the lymphatic system, we have discussed all these things. So the lymphocyte here decreased to 2000 microliter. And the normal lymphocyte count is 9000 microliter, which is enough for a defense mechanism inside the body. So leukopenia, this is the first clinical investigation. The second thing is the protein urea. So what is protein urea? Protein urea is when you're going to test inside a laboratory. So it come up with the, the doctors come up or the investigator will come up to the conclusion that he will find abnormal protein inside urine. This is called protein urea. So it is an abnormal clinical implication. And it can also damage the kidneys. Now coming towards the treatment of measles. So in the treatment of measles, what should you do? The first priority of choice, the first treatment of choice is your good diet plan. You should, the, the, the doctor should prescribe him good diet plan. That what diet should he take in his food. The second thing the you the physician will prescribe antipyretics antipyretics like paracetamol in fever so in fever usually body feels a person feel pain so it's a symptom so antipyretics or paracetamol can be given to that patient the physician or the doctor can also prescribe antihistamines the antihistamines like Fentramine that is available, you can also prescribe to the patient of the measle antihistamines. And antihistamines are basically uh, used for uh, allergic reactions on the body, like rashes, uh, like cracks, rashes, these things, um, right? Uh, burning of eyes, like um, uh, you can say redness of eyes. So in red, for the redness of eyes and burning of eyes, for the uh, sneezing and uh, for uh, itching and for rashes, the priority of drug of choice, we should prefer cetirizine. So it's a priority, of, which is a drug of choice which can uh, be given to the patient uh, of measles and it will uh, fight against redness that is the rashes, the itching, the sensation, the burning sensation of the eyes, the, the sneezing. So all these are reactions, allergic reactions, you can say sorts of allergic reactions. You can give one to those patients. Also the patient will cough in this scenario. So you can give to the patient the anti-cough syrups. Like you can use hydrolin, you can use estomol D syrup. An important, uh, uh, you can say, uh, advantage of the histamol D syrup is that it can uh, thin the sputum inside your lung because in disease cases your sputum have been ticked, 
so it can be reduced to thin or its nature can be changed and it should uh, it, it it will be converted it it would be converted into a thin sputum now uh, we coming towards the antibiotics the antibiotics should also be given to the patient of measles and dry infections like rash like inflammation etc now coming towards its prevention how you will prevent the measles so it's very important that uh, you should offer him complete bed rest the patient uh, the, the physician should give him complete bed rest uh, for about uh, 10 days and also mmr vaccination for the measles mmr vaccination m stand for measles m stand for mumps and r stands for rubella virus so these are viruses so these vaccinations are basically used against these viruses now coming towards the complication of the measles so encephalopathy that is the meninges of the brain would be affected and uh, the patient would be confused he would feel he, he would not lead to do the proper routine work he will be misguided or the brain would be confused in this scenario so encephalopathy the other complication would be that it can cause uh otitis media in air inner air infection bronchitis bronchitis when there is a void tis comes suffix at the end of a word it means that tis means that there is an inflammatory condition present so bronchitis the large airways of the lungs would be affected and in bronchitis also there is uh, its own sign and symptom own sign and symptom of the bronchitis that in bronchitis the person or the doctor will come up with the yellow gray sputum so it's uh, this is its complication and also the patient will feel diarrhea and have conjunctivitis conjunctivitis means that there is uh conjunctivitis conjunctivitis mean there is inflammation of the conjunctiva of the eye conjunctiva means this is a membrane which covers your um you can say white part of your eyeball and it also covers the eye so this is called conjunctiva so inflammation of the conjunctiva this is called conjunctivitis so it's an inflammatory condition and also keratosis keratosis is an abnormal growth it is a non cancerous growth on the skin so these are its complications uh now coming towards another disease that is called rubella virus rubella is also called as the german measles german measles and it is caused by a virus named toga virus similarly here the spread is it is also an airborne disease and it can be spread through the air droplet from one person to another as we have said communicable disease so it is moderately communicable that is less uh, you can say communicable than that of the measles so it is of light intensity than that of the measles so is it, it is it spread then incubation period for uh, rubella virus is different that is from uh, 15 to 21 days normally rest for 16 days then we come towards its clinical findings or clinical relevance in 25% of adults it can cause joint diseases like fingers wrist and knee arthritis it can also cause malaise that is a general feeling of discomfort to the body that is called malaise it can also cause <clears throat> pink rashes on the neck pink rashes on the neck in the case of measles we said that 
there will be red rashes on the face. Here, there is pink rashes on the neck in case of rubella. And it can affect children specifically. Um, and it uh, basically, we are talking about the rashes. So the rashes would appear in two to three days after it spread. So then it can uh, occupy the chest and uh, gradually it covers the whole body. So commonly you can see the, uh, this type of uh, uh, disease uh, in children. Now coming towards this treatment, the treatment is same like that of the measles. That is, you can offer uh, antipyretics to the children. Antipyretics, uh, same as the paracetamol. In uh, fever condition, you can also uh, uh, give them antihistamines. That is, uh, it is used for uh, uh, allergic reactions. Normally, physician gives um, these type of drugs to the patients having pollen, uh, you can say allergy or dust allergy. So in these scenarios it can be used or you can say simple sneeze just because of the pollen or dust allergies. So this type of drugs should be prescribed by the physician. So you can also give this type of drug in uh, rubella virus. Now coming towards risk prevention. The prevention is here again very important. Children with age from uh, 12 to uh, 15 months, 12 to 15 months are vaccinated by the same vaccination that is the MMR, measles, mumps, rubella virus vaccination. Now females specifically, it is very important in females age between uh, 15 to 45 years of age, you can give the MMR vaccination to the ladies. But it is very important, keep in mind that it is contraindicated during pregnancy. This vaccination is contraindicated during pregnancy up to three months before pregnancy. It is contraindicated. You shouldn't give up that type of vaccination to the to the mother or to the lady. Because if you give uh, this uh, type of vaccination to the lady, so what happens? It will cause complications. It will cause birth complication, congenital abnormalities. So the in the body of the baby, and it can also cause the mild hepatitis and also encephalopathy, as we have earlier discussed in measles, encephalopathy, brain disease, in which the the brains the, the the person brains become confused, and it would not lead to that patient to to do his normal routine work. So these are uh, very important, uh, you can say, um, clinical uh, complications of the drugs. That if you give these drugs to the ladies having, uh, uh, you can say, pregnancy in pregnancy, so it is contraindicated during the pregnancy and up to three months before the pregnancy. You shouldn't give because it causes birth defects. So this is all about the rubella virus and about the measles. Uh, inshallah, in the next lecture, uh, we will discuss next diseases, the infectious diseases. Uh, uh, so at the end, I will thank you all of you and also I would like to say that kindly subscribe my YouTube channel. Uh, you should uh, come there and comment there, give your positive feedback. So we will become happy and it gives encouragement to us and uh, hopefully uh, it prepares us for the future best video, best medical videos uh, for you people. So thank you so much. Uh, Assalamu alaikum.